I'm a super massive black hole found in the center of almost all massive galaxies. I'm a super massive black hole. There are theories of how I'm formed. Come and join me and see. There are three types of black holes according to theory. Primordial, stellar, and super massive like me. The primordial's a tiny hypothetical. 1974, Stephen Hawking theorized its role. Primordials were formed in the early universe, but we'll learn about this more when I teach that topics course. On to the most common type called the stellar black hole, but let's first see why a star exists before it loses control. The pressure from the nuclear fuel in the core pushes outward so greatly, while the force of an equal power pushing in is caused by gravity. This equal pressure does create the star's main sequence stage. That means the star is stable in its present burning age. When stars with the sun's mass run out of nuclear fuel in its core, it becomes a red giant that quietly becomes a white dwarf. But stars with 25 the mass of your solar system sun runs out of nuclear fuel, its gravity crushes the core and becomes a stellar. It's the most common type in the universe. Now I will tell you how created of course now i'm a super massive black hole the third type of black hole seen believed to be found in the center of any major galaxy a black hole is a region of space with a force of gravity so strong that nothing not even light can escape you've learned in this song how i acquired my mass is still yet to be determined and astronomers are still working on how i'm formed that is certain some think i'm formed from the collapse of a massive cloud of gas during the early stages of the formation of galaxies with mass my parts start with the accretion disk orbiting around me it's superheated gas and dust swirling around the singularity the singularity is the very center of a black hole you see made up of matter collapsed into a region of infinite density the event horizons the radius around the singularity which energy and matter cannot escape the black hole's gravity the innermost stable orbits the last place material orbit safely without the risk of falling past the point of no return in me a photon sphere is a location where gravity is so strong that light can travel in circles and orbiting the black hole are photons i feed on stars dust and gas and produce jets of near light speed blasting particles and radiation out of my poles as you can see these are relativistic jets and the last part i'll talk about thank you for learning with me now i am out shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt In the outer solar system is where its presence is felt This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt Extending from the orbit of Neptune so its ice doesn't melt The Kuiper Belt is beyond Neptune's orbit One of the largest structures in our solar system, I admit It was discovered after Pluto was in 1930 But 1990 the Kuiper Belt's a region of leftovers that are icy From the solar system's early history This is thought to be one of the main sources of comets But the Kuiper Belt is mainly made of icy objects There's lots of objects here and also rocky effects Astronomers generally accept as the known dwarf planets Orcus and Pluto both exist within the Kuiper Belt Haumea and Quora also make their presence felt. There are hundreds of thousands of objects in the Kuiper Belt region that have been there since the solar system began. This region's 30 astronomical units or 50 AU from the sun. That's the estimated size of the Kuiper Belt on its icy run. The Kuiper Belt's a trans-Neptunian region in the solar system. It's smaller than the asteroid belt but much larger as it's spun. This Kuiper Belt's named after the Dutch astronomer Gerard Kuiper though he did not credit its existence I am sure. The Kuiper Belt's far past Neptune's orbit it's felt but the Oort cloud extends even further circling the Kuiper Belt. Lots of Kuiper Belt objects have moons that orbit 
Orbit Daily, the most well-known are Pluto, Haumea, Quora, and also Aries. There are more than a trillion comets within the Kuiper Belt. Halley's Comet is the most famous on Earth, their presence is felt. This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt. In the outer solar system is where its presence is felt. This is a circumstellar disk called the Kuiper Belt. Extending from the orbit of Neptune so its ice doesn't melt. We're the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Telescope, that's me. We're here to tell you about us and what we can see. After decades of planning and research, I was finally finished and launched in 1990 as NASA had wished. I orbit 340 miles above Earth's surface to do my thing. Powered by solar power collected by my two solar powered wings. I'm the length of a large school bus and weigh as much as two elephants, making more than a million observations. While traveling five miles per second I take sharp pictures of objects in the sky Such as galaxies, planets, and stars And transmit them back to Earth for you to see Earth's telescopes are blocked by the atmosphere To see light from space I orbit above this atmosphere To give a clear view of my star chase My achievements are pinning down the age of the universe And I discovered two moons of Pluto, Nix, and Hydra, of course I've helped determine the rate of which the universe is expanding in hole and discovered nearly every major galaxy is anchored by a black hole. The James Webb Telescope is an infrared space observatory launched in 2021 for space exploration. You see, I'm here to probe the cosmos and uncover the history of the universe from the Big Bang and alien planet formation and much more, of course. I'll take 30 days to travel a million miles to my home that's permanent orbiting the sun aligned with the Earth to explore space is my intent. When NASA built me 10 billion dollars was my cost. My impressive primary mirror is 6.5 meters across. It has 18 segments in a honeycomb structure, I say, and I am powered by an onboard solar array. The solar array provides me with 2,000 watts of electrical power and a propulsion system to maintain my observatory orbit by the hour. I have enough propellant on board to last 10 years of operation to give a better understanding of the universe to every nation. I can see 13 billion light years back in time, which is 100 million years after the universe was born. I do refine. We're important because we give a view of space that is clear. Orbiting above Earth's foggy atmosphere We're the Hubble Space Telescope And the James Webb Telescope, that's me We're here to tell you about us and what we can see Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. I'm Comet Hailbop, one of the brightest comet scenes. C slash 19501. I was designated formally. I'm Comet Hailbop, one of the brightest comet scene in 1995 was my discovery. I was discovered by an astronomer, Alan Hale and Thomas Bob, the astronomer amateur. I was discovered before I was visible to the naked eye on July 23rd in 1995. Astronomers believe I originated from beyond Neptune, from the Oort cloud, which is 2,000 to 100,000 AU. My elliptical orbit is long, they can take around 200 years or even to orbit the sun, just to be clear. I was one of the most widely observed comets in the 20th century. In for many decades, one of the brightest seen. I passed perihelion in 1997, but it is unsure when I'll reach my aphelion. When I was visible to the naked eye for humans, it was so much fun. I was observed with the naked eye for about 18 months. I may have had a near collision with Jupiter in early June 2215 BC. I'm Comet Hailbop, one of the brightest comets seen. C slash 1995 01, I was designated formally. 
I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen. In 1995 was my discovery. I have several types of tails that trail. Let me tell you about all of them to impress, they don't fail. One is called the Bright Dust Tail, created by the reflection of the sunlight from the streaming from the comet. Am I? The second is called the Ion Tail. It is more faint, made up of electrically charged atoms. I do hell. I was discovered with a rare third tail, you'll see, called the Sodium Tail, trailing from the back of me. I do have a nucleus, which is estimated to be about 30 to 40 kilometers across me. I am the first comet that astronomers did detect, the noble gas argon in which I reflect. I'm Comet Hailbop, one of the brightest comets seen, C slash 1995-01, I was designated formally. I'm Comet Hailbop, one of the brightest comets seen, in 1995 was my discovery. I'm Haley's Comet, the most famous comet in the galaxy. About every 75 years, I'm in the Earth's vicinity. I'm Haley's Comet, the most famous comet in the galaxy. With observations dating back. short period comet orbiting less than 200 years you'll see i've been observed by astronomers since 240 bce when the chinese babylonian and europeans recorded Estimated to be in the year of 
our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters earth has a second moon it's me provisionally designated 2016 HO3 Kamu is thought to be an asteroid but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid I was first spotted in April of 2016 By Pan, Stars, Asteroid Survey Telescope You now see This telescope is located on Haleakala In Hawaii Which is all part of the Haleakala Observatory When I was discovered orbiting the Earth in a weird way Kamu'u Alava was the name they gave me even though it is extremely hard to say I am very small compared to Earth's moon measuring 164 feet across I'm tiny, it's true I circle the Earth in a repeating corkscrew-like trajectory Never closer than 40 to 100 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon you see I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye like other asteroids do I'm a quirky satellite and this is true because of this researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment it's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree when I was ejected into space I am lunar debris I am a near earth object also known as Neo part of a group of near earth asteroids called Apollo I'm an object in a specific type of coal orbital configuration with a planet I'm called a quasi satellite I know it's weird but I didn't plan it Earth has a second moon It's me, provisionally designated 2016 HO3 Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid But that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid
only see one half of my surface, whether it's day or night. When the earth spins on its axis, ocean levels stay the same. Then the moon's gravitational pull creates the tides that we see change. 238,900 miles from the earth is the distance measured when the first spaceship landed on my turf. The reason you see one half of my surface all the time is because my rotation's the same speed as the earth taught in this rhyme. It takes 27 earth days for me to rotate once around. There is no air on my surface so you won't hear any sound. On the moon, Earth's natural satellite, I rotate the same speed as the earth and I'm a natural source of light. On the moon, my appearance is gray and white You only see one half of my surface Whether it's day or night I'm Maki Maki, I have an official new moon Let me introduce MK2 To all the world and you Hello, I'm MK2, a satellite of Maki Maki. I was noticed one year ago, now an official moon I be. In the month of April in 2015 is when I was noticed by Hubble's Whitefield Camera 3. The Southwest Research Institute, led by Mark Boo, we are the first scientists in the world to ever notice me. I'm very hard to see because I'm in the Kuiper Belt And my charcoal colored surface certainly doesn't help As 20, 15, 13, 64, 72, 1 Is what I was provisionally designated but not much fun They officially nicknamed me with the name MK2 I'll tell you more about me after the chorus you'll hear is through I'm Maki Maki, I have an official new move let me introduce MK2 to all the world and you. Hello, I'm MK2, a satellite of Maki Maki. I was noticed one year ago, now an official moon I be. It's estimated my diameter's 100 miles across. That's an estimate only from a bunch of astronomers. I'm 1300 times more faint than dwarf Maki Maki. When a telescope gets closer, they will see. I'm 13,000 miles from my door planet so bright And I'm called the moon because I'm a natural satellite Maki Maki had what scientists thought were dark warm spots Now they think it was me making those warm dots I'm Maki Maki, I have an official new moon Let me introduce MK2 to all the world and you Hello, I'm MK2, a satellite of Maki I was noticed one year ago, now an official moon I be. I'm Maki Maki, I have an official new moon. Let me introduce MK2 to all the world and you. Hello, I'm MK2, a satellite of Maki Maki. I was noticed one year ago, now an official moon I be. Third 
also known as Super Earth Soon you'll also agree I am TOI 561B My surface is extremely hot due to my star's proximity TOI 561B was discovered in the year of 2020 by the transmitting exoplanet survey satellite also known as TESS it sees things way out of sight TOI 561B was discovered in the Milky Way galaxy with an estimated age of 13 billion years the Milky Way galaxy is super old I do agree my estimated age is 10 billion years that makes me one of the oldest rocky planets discovered with cheer I am around 280 light years away I'm a third bigger than the earth I do convey I get close when I orbit my G-type star It takes me 10.5 hours to orbit once because I'm not too far My mass is 1.59 of the Earth's That's one of the reasons I'm so unique for what that's worth Lauren Wise's team is researching me She's the team leader at the University of Hawaii it's unlikely any life can survive on me With a surface temperature of 3630 degrees That's roughly twice as hot as molten lava on Earth In Fahrenheit since my discovery and my birth I'm tidally locked to my G-type star in motion I have a permanent day side that's likely home to a magma ocean I am TOI 561B One of the oldest rocky planets discovered you'll see TOI 561B I am an exoplanet in the Milky Way galaxy TOI 561B Also known as Super Earth Soon you'll also agree I am TOI 561B My surface is extremely hot due to my star's proximity We are the Earth and the Moon And you will learn really soon You can fit the planets in our solar system Between us, this is true We are the Earth and the Moon We meant to tell you for a while The average distance between us We will explain to you with a smile The average distance between the Earth and the Moon is 382,500 kilometers Here's the other seven planets fit between us explaining who they are with some cool features I am Mercury, the first planet from the Sun I'm the second hottest planet on my run my average diameter, we do know, is 4,879 kilometers Add these up as they are shown I am Venus, the hottest planet, and the second from the sun I have an average diameter of 12,104 kilometers in the solar system Hi, I am Mars, the fourth planet from the sun you should know I have an average diameter of 6,771 kilometers as I did show My name is Jupiter, the largest planet in from the sun I'm number 5 My average diameter is 139,822 kilometers as I thrive I'm the planet with the prominent rings The sixth one called Saturn My average diameter is 116,464 kilometers While I turn 
I am Uranus. I am the seventh planet from the solar system's sun. I have an average diameter of 50,724 kilometers. I'm a frozen one. I am Neptune, the eighth and last planet in the solar system as far as we know. I have an average diameter of 49,244 kilometers. I'm blue as shown. Our total planet diameter size when added up is 380,008 kilometers we share. We still have 2,492 kilometers of space to spare. We are the Earth and the Moon. And you will learn really soon You could fit the planets in our solar system Between us, this is true We are the Earth and the Moon We meant to tell you for a while The average distance between us We will explain to you with a smile Earth has four major geological subsystems I will teach you in this song I hope you learn and listen Geosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere and biosphere Are four major systems on Earth that balance Why we survive here These systems are all separate but interact with one another In so many different ways in each system you will discover Let's start with geosphere, all Earth's materials and Comprised of all these parts that you'll be learning in my class The solid iron in our core is a bit smaller than the moon The nickel iron alloy on our core is liquid, it is true The mantle is a layer between the crust and on our core Mostly made of minerals and silicate rock Let's learn some more Which brings us to the crust in which we all play and live on Made up of rock and lots of elements that keep four major geological subsystems I will teach you in this song I hope you learn and listen The atmosphere's the next sphere that we will look at It contains our air and protects all of us Now how about that? The atmosphere's made up of five layers Now you know one layer blocks radiation from the sun It's called the ozone Let's move on to the hydrosphere It's a major
The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. Goldilocks Zone is a habitable zone In an area around a star you know The zone is not too hot And it's not too cold For liquid water to exist so life can grow There is only one planet we know so far That is teeming with life, of course That planet that we're sure can sustain real life Has a well-known name it is the Earth. If the Earth were to move as far as Pluto, the sun would be the size of a pea. The oceans and atmosphere on Earth would immediately freeze. But if Earth moved to the position of planet Mercury, the Earth's water would quickly boil away There would be no more life you see The Goldilocks Zone is a habitable place Where Earth sits from the sun Allowing water to stay liquid Liquid water's the source of life That's how life on Earth begun Stars come in different sizes, masses, and temperatures throughout space. Size and temperature of a star determines the Goldilocks Zone's place. Stars that are smaller and much cooler than the sun have a habitable zone much closer to their star on its run. Stars that are hotter, much larger, and more massive than the sun have their habitable zone much farther. This concludes our fun. Did you know? The place you call home is a habitable place in space called the Goldilocks Zone. It's a place in space, a certain distance from our star, where liquid water could be found. Guess what? It's where you are. Here's a moon-sized comparison in our solar system We're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit My name is Tethys, I'm one of Saturn's 82 moons My radius is 531 kilometers, it is true I am Dion, I orbit Saturn, you do see My radius is 561 kilometers, that is me Ariel is my name, Uranus is what I orbit My radius is 578 kilometers, I'm third on the list I am Umbriel, Uranus is where I'm from My radius is 584 kilometers, I am spun I'm the moon of Sharon, I float in orbit Pluto radius is 606 kilometers, this I do know I'm Iapetus, a moon of Saturn Radius of 734 kilometers as I turn Oberon is my name, outermost moon of Uranus 761 kilometers is my radius I am Rhea Saturn's second largest moon radius of 763 kilometers. See you soon. Here's a moon size comparison in our solar system. We're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done. We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit. We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit. Not Titania, the largest moon of Uranus. 788 kilometers is my radius. The name is Triton, the largest moon of Neptune. I'm 1,353 kilometers in radius in this tune. Europa is frozen and the moon of Jupiter. My radius is 1,560 kilometers. I am the moon of the planet Earth. My radius is 
1737 kilometers for what it's worth. Hello, I'm Io, the strangest moon of Jupiter, with a radius of 1821 kilometers. I'm Callisto, I orbit Jupiter, you see. My radius 2410 kilometers, that's all on me. Titan is my name, Saturn's my claim to fame. 2574 kilometers is my radius, I claim. I'm gonna meet the largest moon in the solar system. Jupiter is what I orbit, yeah, that's where I'm from. My radius is 2634 kilometers now. Let's listen to the chorus while the moons take a bow. Here's a moon-sized comparison in our solar system We're happy if you'd shed some light on us until we are done We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit Here's a theory of how the Earth was formed So scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played Five billion years ago there was only our sun Which was a newborn star surrounded by dust was how it begun Over time this dust began to slam into one another Due to gravity pulling it in as it smashed into each other The planet that we live on was made by space dust and rocks That formed Earth over millions of years into an orb not a box They say four and a half billion years ago Earth was a fireball that's right, with surface temperatures over 2,000 degrees in Fahrenheit. At this point, there was no air, just carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor, making it hot and toxic when the Earth began. Our boiling ball of liquid rock was slammed by a young planet. This planet's name was Thea. It was the size of Mars, as you see it. The blast wave from this collision sent trillions of tons of debris, which over time was pulled back in to circle the Earth by gravity. This giant ring around the earth was made of red hot dust and rock Eventually formed our moon we see today, I know it's a shock Let's speed up millions of years to see how water formed About 3.9 billion years ago, earth was hit by a meteor storm Inside each meteor, scientists think there were small crystals Each crystal held tiny droplets of water inside their shells Over the 20 million years I do tell, no water on our earth is billions of years old now you see And may have traveled millions of miles to be consumed by you and me Let's speed up hundreds of millions of years to find the earth covered in water With tiny islands peeking out while the core remained much hotter This hot core pushes molten rock up and out the earth's new crust When the lava cools it forms the land we know as it builds and thrusts Over time these land start to collide and eventually form our continents we know today do still transform here's a theory of how the earth was formed so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played how did earth get its atmosphere we have today there are three basic atmospheric hypotheses still used to this day the first atmosphere was made up of hydrogen and helium gas these molecules move so fast they the second was made of lots of volcanoes releasing water as steam And carbon dioxide, hydrogen, sulfate, ammonia, and methane science agreed The third and current atmosphere is made up of this You will see plants take in carbon dioxide and give up oxygen to you and me All animals take in oxygen and give up CO2 Also volcanoes and burning stuff produces this like fossil fuels We burn too many fossil fuels and have too many Farms. All this carbon dioxide we produce is doing our earth harm It's up to us to change the way we consume and create energy If you start to make changes now our planet will change you will see Please do your part to save the earth to improve your future now We're capable of change go make us all proud Here's a theory of how the earth was formed So scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity you're so smart and important, so believe in what you can do. Make a 
change and set the stage in Earth's future for you. We're astronomical objects brought to you here by Psy. Some within Neptune's orbit, others trans-Neptunian we fly. We're astronomical objects brought to you here by size We all orbit the sun that may come as some surprise I'm Phoebe, an irregular satellite of Saturn I be My alternative name is Saturnine, you can see Discovered in 1899 by William Pickering My diameter is 213 kilometers while I do my thing I'm 10199 Caraclo, an asteroid with rings the largest Confirm small body of the outer solar system I sing I'm possibly a dwarf planet with a measured diameter of 232 kilometers I'm sure I'm 38628 Ooh, yeah, a minor planet in your system or trans-Neptunian object is my technical term as I'm spun you can find me in the Kuiper Belt in the outer solar system my diameter is 406 kilometers how fun I'm 2000 18 BG 18 of this I am sure a trans Neptunian object don't leave there is more first observed in 2018 by three astronomers 500 kilometers is my known diameter my name is Vesta I'm a minor planet you now know I'm one of the largest objects in the asteroid belt I do show I'm probably the second largest asteroid after Ceres I have a mean diameter of 500 25 kilometers you see. I'm 2014 UZ 224, a trans Neptunian object and possibly a dwarf planet, but the IAU hasn't decided yet. Out in the Kuiper belt, I was discovered. I am sure 635 kilometers is my diameter. I'm 20,000 Varuna, a large trans Neptunian object in the Kuiper belt. I dwell in possible dwarf, but not yet. My elongated shape is due to my rapid rotation 668 kilometers is my diameter well spun I am Ceres I am a dwarf planet I'm the largest object in the main asteroid belt to orbit I am too dim to be seen by the naked eye for sure I am 946 kilometers in diameter my name is Senna I am a minor planet on the run I'm three times as far as Neptune from the sun my surface is one of the reddest among the solar system objects I'm 995 kilometers in diameter glad we met my name is Quora and I'm a dwarf planet candidate but for now I'm a non-resonant trans-Neptunian object I reside in the Kuiper belt it's so cold here Burr. and I'm 1110 kilometers in diameter I'm 2007 OR10 that name it stood strong with the proposed name in 2019 of Gong Gong my furthest distance is 9.4 billion miles from the Sun my diameter is 1230 kilometers as I run not Maki Maki a minor planet I be I'm perhaps the second largest object in the Kuiper belt you see I was discovered in 2005 by a team led by Michael Brown and currently 1430 kilometers in diameter and I'm round Almea is my name I'm a dwarf planet by fame beyond Neptune's orbit you can find me with some aim I'm the third largest known trans-Neptunian object I'm 1632 kilometers in diameter last I checked my name is Ceres I am a dwarf planet as well and the second largest dwarf planet in the solar system how swell located beyond the Kuiper belt in a region called the scatter disk my diameter in kilometers is 2326 I'm Pluto I'm a big deal as the largest dwarf planet I used to be the ninth planet in the solar system till I quit I am part of the cold and lonely Kuiper belt my diameter is 2300 176 kilometers so I tell we're astronomical objects brought to you here by size some within Neptune's orbit others trans Neptunian we fly we're astronomical objects brought to you here by size we all orbit the Sun that may come as some surprise 
We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri. Centauri B officially Toliman I trust Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass And 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class Alpha Centauri Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know. At 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better. With an orbital period of almost 80 years by far. And from a distance we're so close we look like one star. I'm Proxima Centauri, a small and faint red dwarf star. You cannot see me with the naked I though I'm the closest star by far I'm about 4.24 light years from the earth and I'm the closest star to the Sun for what that is worth discovered in 1915 by astronomer Robert Eins I'm sure in South Africa at the Union Observatory in Johannesburg my Latin name Proxima Centauri means when this is defined the nearest star of Centaurus that's all that's assigned we're Alpha Centauri the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B officially Toliman I trust. Centauri C, officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. Let's learn about the lunar eclipse. It's when the moon darkens as it passes into the Earth's shadow. Please don't miss this. Let's learn about the lunar eclipse. The Earth passes between the moon and the sun till the Earth's shadow I kiss. On the moon, you can see me. Day or night, when you look into the sky on the Earth's natural satellite You may be asking yourself, what's a lunar eclipse? It's when the Earth passes between the moon and sun like this When the sun hits the Earth, the Earth casts a shadow upon me We'll learn about the shadows, names and the stages of the eclipse You will see the penumbras, a partially shaded outer region of the shadow cast by an opaque object like the earth not letting the light pass the umbra is the fully shaded area you see here caused by the opaque object earth not letting any light pass there there are seven stages to this event you will see caused by the penumbra and umbra you'll learn these names with me stage one is the penumbra it's when i enter the penumbra here and a partial shadow is cast on my surface over there stage two is a partial eclipse it's when the earth moves between the sun and the moon A bit more casting more of a shadow upon me The total eclipse is the name of stage 3 It's when the earth blocks the rays of the sun completely The maximum eclipse is stage 4 You may see me turn a reddish color This is the middle of the total eclipse To me there is no other Stage 5 is called the total eclipse And it's when I touch the umbra internally once again Stage 6 is called the partial eclipse And it's when the moon leaves the umbra Moving to the penumbra again The penumbral eclipse end is the final stage You see it's when the moon leaves the penumbra And the sun shines itself on me Let's learn about the lunar eclipse It's when the moon darkens as it passes into the earth's shadow Please don't miss this Let's learn about the lunar eclipse The earth passes between the moon Sun till the Earth's shadow I kiss Let's learn about the lunar eclipse 
It's when the moon darkens as it passes into the Earth's shadow. Please don't miss this. Let's learn about the lunar eclipse. The Earth passes between the moon and the sun till the Earth's shadow I kiss. Solar planet that you now see 
I am Mercury, the second hottest as I'm spun. I'm in your solar system, closest planet to your sun. Come visit this planet so far to learn all about Mars. I'm the 10th largest planet, but not really in charge. My name is Venus, for what that is worth. I'm almost the same size as your beautiful Earth. I'm the Earth on this planetary run. Please take care of me. I'm the planet you all live on. Proxima Centauri B, I'm the planet you see. An exoplanet in a habitable zone, you degree. Have you heard about me? Kepler 10B is my name. I have a rocky surface, I'm amazing, some do claim. My surface is a furnace, I'm Coro 7B. 489 light years from the Earth, that's me. Neptune centers Earth size and my atmosphere's methane, hydrogen, and helium. And I'm the most distant from our burning sun. I'm Uranus, the planet seven from the sun, yet I'm blue with 13 rings, I'm sure we have met. You know me as Saturn with rings, this is true. I have the most moons in the solar system, now 82. I'm Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. I am the fifth planet from the sun. I'm an extrasolar planet, this is 51 Pegasi B. Some think my atmosphere contains water that we may see. I am a planet, my name's Gliss 876D. An extrasolar planet up in this mix, that's me. I'm named HD 100546 B. I am designated the largest known planet you see. We are some planets, all different in size. Here's our planetary size comparison for you live. We'll look at each planet, measured by their radius here. There are so many planets that will 